Great stuff. Hoping we're going to have a few people jumping on as we speak. In any case, I might as well just uh, get it all started. My name is Prosper Tarubenga and I am your online prosperity strategist. So basically, I believe that every online business uh, that's out there should be profitable and people should actually enjoy um, you know, working in that business right there. So I see we've got a couple of people that just tuned in. Thank you so much. We're going to be talking about how you can rank your YouTube um, videos using search engine uh, strategies. All right. So I actually believe that um, if you're a business person, you should be able to create for and actually relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. And I also believe that as human beings, we should be able to learn uh, to leave and also contribute. And that's how we then put out content in the form of, um, you know, videos or blog posts. And I see Melissa Groom has just tuned in. Thank you so much for uh, joining in. I really want to make sure that this video is going to help a lot of people how they can actually rank their YouTube videos um, using SEO strategies. So um, I was just still saying that my uh, work generally works around helping coaches, consultants and service providers to actually package brand and market their services so that they have businesses that are enjoyable and profitable. And uh, we do this using digital marketing strategies and one of them actually happens to be SEO. So if you are watching right now, can you just let me know if you've got an understanding or if you know what SEO actually is? If you do, can you type in the number one? If you're not sure, can you type in the number two? That way, this will then um, help me uh, with the trajectory of how this video is going to go because there's no point in me talking about stuff that um, people are not well aware of. And remember, the, the aim of this video today is to leave you with an understanding of how you can actually um, rank your videos um, so that they can be found on the search engine. Dian, thank you so much for tuning in. Shari, where you know know what SEO is. Uh, Susie Chan has some understanding, but not an expert. Understandably, I will try and clarify exactly what SEO is, what it's not, and how you can utilize it to your advantage so that people can actually get to find your content online. Kylie Stratton, Good to see you around here. It's a small world, isn't it? Okay, so when you want to understand SEO, there's only two words that you have to remember. The first one is optimization and the second one is authority. All right, so I'll break down um, these words a little bit. Now, Kylie has no understanding of what SEO is. I'm about to break it down for you there. Hang in tight. And if you know somebody who might benefit from this video, please tag them in this video so that they to can have um, you know the knowledge that we're gonna be dropping on here because at the end of the day like I said we're here to leave we're here to learn we're here to contribute so your contribution would be to tag somebody so that they too can learn and they can leave through um, while reaching out to their audience so back to uh, what we're talking about so optimization is making sure that Google can actually understand the keywords that you're targeting so that Google can understand what your website or what your video is all about, what services you deliver, what products are you offering and where you actually sell them that happens to be the location. So that's the optimization that you do to inform Google what it is that you do, who you do it for, and why they should find you in whatever location you're based. Now, authority happens to be, is your website or your video credible? Is the information you're putting out there Credible or can people can Google rely on sending traffic to that video so that people can get information from that? All right. So authority really is making sure that Google um, knows that you've got the best content for its users. Let it be known that Google does not care about you as the business person. 
Google cares about the user. So they want to make sure that everyone that is in contact with your information is being served with the best information or content that's out there on the market. All right. So if your video has authority, Google now knows that they can send, um, you know, people um, to your video without a problem. Pat Amistad, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So for you to grow your viewership, for you to grow your audience, your videos must have some sort of credibility. And how do you get that credibility? That credibility is due to the authority that you have instilled within the video, the tags that you are putting on the video, and how many other videos actually support your video. I'll be telling you how you can get other videos to vote for you, um, you know, as we go along, all right? So you must have great information so that Google can have that authority to think you are the best person to um, move on and pass on that information uh, to their audience or to their users. So they would naturally share your content. So they are with the peace of mind that you're the best kind of person with the right kind of solution to the pain that whoever would have searched for what it is that you are offering is able to find information without being hooked into um, oblivion. All right. So that's essentially what it's all about. Optimization and authority. So I'm going to be telling you the seven things that actually need to happen for Google to recognize your video for YouTube to also recognize your video. And um, was that explanation understandable? If you understood what I said about optimization and authority so that we move on, can you type in the number one? If you did not understand, please type in the number two, because I really want to make sure that this information is going to be evergreen and can also be utilized by people as reference material. Now I see Bernie has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my love. How have you been? And I hope everybody is doing well. Susie Chen, thank you so much for the support. Kylie Stratton, thank you so much. And Bernie um, has also said they are understanding. Shari, where you are understanding. Thank you, thank you so much, all right? And I'm gonna leave a little bit um, off uh, time right at the end so we can have a Q&A. So if you've got any questions, please hold on to them. I'm going to have time to answer every single one of them. And thank you so much, Sandra, for tuning in. You just tuned in, so I don't know. All right, just so you get an understanding, you only need to know two words, optimization and authority. By optimizing, you're telling Google that these are the keywords that you want to be found for. By authority, you're telling Google that your content is relevant enough for them to pass it on to the people that are going to be searching, um, you know, for, for that sort of content content over there. All right. So here's the big deal and everything else that you really need to realize. At the end of the day, everybody else is going off for views. Everybody else is going, um, you know, off for notoriety or for fame on YouTube. But is the people that are watching those videos the people that are going to be paying you money for your services? So those are the things that you really have to look at is, are you going out there for vanity uh, metrics or are you actually wanting to convert those people that watch your videos into paying customers? And I don't think any of us are running charities. We're actually running businesses. So we want to make sure that every content piece that we put out there actually converts converts or brings us closer to our audience or brings our audience closer to the purchasing uh, decision. Now, what you have to do when you're creating and crafting content online, you should actually realize that people do not care. All right. Once you know that, then it eases you from being so uptight with, first of all, how you look in the video and second of all, how you, um, you know, being perceived by the audience. You got to make sure that you've got a message that is going to a market and that market is using the same media of which you're, you, you're reaching out to them. Now, the media we're going to be talking about today is YouTube. Although video is now big and is now being utilized in Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the other areas. So since I spoke to the visibility mentor, who happens to be Melissa, she recommends that we talk about YouTube. All right. So I probably don't need to tell you by now that YouTube 
is a massive um, you know, search engine which be happens to be the second search engine where people go to the internet to search for information. All right. Did you understand that people might go to the internet to watch cat videos or to connect with the people that they, um, you know, they, they, they know uh, and like and trust and also to get information. Now, if your brand is also providing that information, then you should at least be able to be found. All right. Unless you 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 you're just there to be a charity and it gone are the days that a video can actually go viral. And in any case, you actually don't want your video going viral because it's a waste of your talent going to people that care that don't care any less about your video or what it is that you're talking about. So you really need to focus that when you're ranking your videos, they are actually going to the right views, to the right kind of people with the right kind of pain who are willing and able to purchase your goods and services at the end of it all. All right. So fortunately, the um, SEO on YouTube is not rocket science. All right. It's something that you can learn. And especially after this video and when and, and the seven tricks that I'm going to give you, you will at least be able to memorize one that will make a massive difference to the amount of viewership and the quality of the conversions you're going to be having. All right. So I just want you to follow some of the things that I'm going to be talking about so that you can actually have more traffic that is actually willing and able to make purchases from you. Now, the first thing you got to do is, um, you know, for you to rank on YouTube is to make sure that you've got the video keywords right. Does anyone understand what the keywords are? If you know what keywords are, please type in the number one. If you want an explanation of what a keyword is, please type in the number two. The reason is I really want to make sure that everybody is on board. Everybody has an understanding of what it is that we're talking about. All right. So with regular SEO, a keyword search really um, is the important part about SEO. When Google spiders crawl either a video or a piece of content, it's looking for specific trigger words that will help it understand what the, what the uh, topic is about or what the video is all about. Now, what you really want to do is make sure that in the title of the video, you've got your keywords in there. All right. You have the keywords in the title of the video. You also have to have the keywords within the video itself. You have to speak out what keywords you are looking to target because Google now has what is called machine learning. That's why they can actually, um, you know, write closed caption for your videos because they are actually listening to what it is that you're saying. So they listen for relevance. They listen for, um, you know, is it optimized well enough? All right. So when you've got the keywords in the title, like the title of this video is how to rank YouTube videos using SEO, right? What I want there is YouTube videos. I also used how to, because then it's easy for Google to categorize what the video is all about. Is it a how to, or is it a, a, an information video? Is it an entertaining video? It just makes it easy for you to be filed in a little box and Google just really needs things that are easy for the search engine for, um, to master. All right. So, this is what you, 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 you're going to have to do. You need to put the keyword within the title, say the keyword within the video at least a couple of times. That's when YouTube um, and, and the machine learning, um, you know, spiders on Google will also get to understand what the video is about. That's a bit freaky because then that means they actually listen to what you're saying through your phone, through your videos without you having to even mention it in the meta description. All right. So you need to find the keywords that already have results within YouTube that already have results within Google. And in other words, what I'm trying to say is these keywords must already be what people are already searching. All right. So if you're saying how to shave a cat, when you type into Google, sorry, do not try this at home Do not shave cats. All right. But I'm just trying to give an example of things that are possible. How to, um, you know, um, you know, uh, start a marketing business or how to, uh, change the theme of my computer. 
all of those videos are already there but find out what else how are people speaking you have to speak in the language of the customer because they're the one that are doing the searching all right your understanding of your topic is irrelevant to how the customer views it the customer has their own world view understanding and interpretation of the data that they're looking for so you need to know exactly what your message is actually saying and to what market it's going to so that also i'm not here to teach you how to say your words but you need to understand what your audience likes knows and what it actually wants from your services or your product is that understandable so you really need to understand what your audience's world view is what your niche likes to look out for and you can have that or you can find that by finding out what previous people have searched for and then you can then craft your message or your title using that particular um, you know framework all right does anybody understand what I'm talking about if you are understanding please type in the number one I really want to make sure we are on board with this it is smooth flowing and if you've got any questions remember at the end of this I am gonna be op opening up um, you know a Q&A so that we can um, have a look at um, you know what, what it is that you might need to know so the most common videos that Google and YouTube really really likes because they want to help um, you know their audience are how to videos reviews and tutorials all right so remember when i started the show i said you're here to live you're here to learn and you're here to contribute that's exactly how google really wants to also let their audience realize that they want people to contribute so if you're showing people how to do things making their lives easier making their days better and their whole existence a whole lot better or reviewing a product or you can even review your own product but if it is a review people will more than happy research and and find out if you can help them through that all right and anything else that is that you need to know what your audience viscerally is looking for online which then helps you to get closer to where the money is closer to the way your audience has a worldview that then your service or your product can actually fulfill all right so once you found all the keywords that other people are using use them sparingly all right because if you try and put them all in your tags in your in your uh, video description or talk about them in your video it's now called a keyword dump and Google does not look favorably upon that all right so you want to make sure that you're using them sparingly Google will notice what is the recurring theme that's why when you put a video there's already a video that says um, you know recommend it because it has listened to what you're saying and it wants to recommend a video that is actually relevant next after that all right so for you to control all of that you also have to make sure that your video has a few views 10 views are what Google starts ranking your video on because then it has some time that people have watched it nobody wants to go to a party where there's no other people so why would Google send people to a video that hasn't got any views yet so you want to make sure that you your, your your titles your meta titles all are saying what it is that the video is about and make sure you hook people to watch because Google also looks at I mean YouTube also looks at how are people interacting with that video all right how are people interacting with that video are you noticing a trend in the things that I'm doing with this video every 10 or so uh, minutes or every sort of um, whenever I'm segueing into a new topic or anything like that I'm asking people to interact all right now Google will notice that or YouTube will notice that people are actually interacting with the video so it must be good so you want to in, in, engage your audience you want to get them interacting with that video so that Google looks at the watch rate why is that important because YouTube wants to make sure that you are staying um, the people are staying within the platform and not going anywhere else all right because they know people can be sucked in by Facebook which is trying to be all of the internet they can be sucked in by other social media engines so if your video is engaging enough then there's a reason for YouTube to want to rank that video 
Do you understand that last bit? If you did, can you please type in the number one? If not, I can go over it. And uh, also, if you've got any questions, reserve them for when we, um, you know, open up the Q&A uh, session right there. All right. So all of this, can you notice that most of the SEO really revolves around the user experience? that the message is actually going to a targeted market because you can't, you can always bring a horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink, all right? So you wanna make sure that you plan your video with the YouTube user experience in mind. From the get-go, your message should seriously be engaging. Your message should be on point. All right, so I've got a three-step process that I actually do for you to create and craft a hook that, you know, keeps people watching for longer and longer. All right, if you type in the number two, I will um, give you the three-step process. Please type in the number two and I will dish out the three-step process. The reason being, I really want to give this to people that are actually either taking notes or actually really engaged because I need to save maybe the best content for those that are actually, um, you know, the good good people get rewarded. So if we type in at least five people typing in the number two, that will let us move on to what I am um, called the three-step process, which are the three P's, you know, for getting people hooked onto your um, your show. Thank you so much, Kylie. Thank you so much, Barbara Bryson. How are you doing, by the way? Sandra McCarran, thank you so much for typing in the number two. And uh, Samantha Beckham says, I'm a little bit late, but you can always watch the replay of this video. We're just talking about the seven and a half tactics that you, um, you know, you can use um, in order to have your videos ranking on YouTube. All right. So the hook, thank you so much, everybody else that typed in number two. And thank you so much, um, you know, for your time and, um, you know, the attention that you are availing uh, to this uh, information. Now, you need to give a preview. That's the first P. A preview as in what's in it for the listener. Why should they care? Why can they can why should they stick around to your video and not go and watch cat videos? Remember, people's attention span is going lower and lower and lower. So you need to hook them right from the get-go. What's in it for them? What are they gonna learn and why should they care? Because they can get this information anywhere else. Alright? So Google Google also notices what happens within the first 10 seconds of that video. All right. They notice what happens within that first 10 seconds. So if you give people a preview, you've already hooked them. All right. And then you give them proof. Why should they listen to you and not get this information elsewhere? So now you've got a preview as to what's in it for them. Why should they care to listen to you? You give them the proof as in, OK, yes, because I run a you know, a digital marketing agency and I've got results that would, um, you know, constitute what you also want, right? Because people are always looking for something new and exciting and remarkable. So why should they listen to you over anybody else who's got a, a same video within the same category? And then thirdly, you also repeat that preview again. Remember their concentration span is so low. You know what? They could have just, um, you know, Skip the first 15 seconds just to get to the gist of what the video is all about. All right. So the first 15 seconds are crucial. And that's also where you should put in a couple of the keywords. All right. So that Google can listen to that part. All right. So, you know, unlike, um, you know, um, you know, Google and, and, and everything else, they really want to make sure that they, user experience is very, um, you know, is respected. All right. So the better your user experience on YouTube, the first 15 seconds, the higher you will rank. And in fact, you can actually outrank your competitors with 10 more views. Um, if your video has better, you know, user experience signals. So are people reacting Are commenting? Are they liking? Are they sticking around for more than uh, the stipulated initial time that they should be looking at that video? All right. So how many people are actually watching this video? So you want to make sure as you script your film or your video, 
right from the start, keep the user experience in mind. Audience retention is the percentage which how many people are tending to watch that video in 10 second increments. Because with every video, first 10 seconds buys you the next 20 seconds. 20 seconds buys you the next 20 seconds, all right? So how much audience are you keeping watching that video? How many people are commenting or reacting to that video? How many actual subscribers are watching? So if you've got a lot of subscribers that are just from that channel, it means that your content is good so that, that in as much as people want to watch it over and over and over again. So it is also an indication that that video is an amazing video. That will also affect your ranking. How many people have shared that video across? How many people are actually engaging with it, favoriting it? How many people have put up the thumbs up? You know, make sure your video is at least five minutes long. The longer, the better. All right. And uh, Melissa says, are you going to do us a dance at the end of this video? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is a dance required? All right. I really want to be, um, you know, to leave as much value with you guys as possible. And I really want this video to be a reference video that people can always come back to. All right, and utilize it so that they can be, do, and have, first of all, a business that's profitable and enjoyable, and second of all, you know, videos that their audience really, really want to watch, okay? And um, Melissa says to keep us watching, <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm giving enough value uh, that is, you know, making people want to stay, all right? So... When, uh, when you've done all this, you know, crafting and creating that video, before you upload that video, you always have to maybe save it when it's, um, when it's in your, uh, what do you call it, in your, in your hard drive. Now, let me just find out what Sandra says. Does YouTube also take into account a thumbs down? Exactly. A thumbs down is meaning that people are not enjoying that content. So that also takes away the, 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 the percentage of them likely thinking that this video is beneficial to the people that are watching it. All right. So for you to actually get more, more views, you need those. The first 10 views are crucial. So you need to send that video to a captured audience or to your subscribers. So once a video is posted, try and send them. I'm, I'm supposing the people that are um, watching this already have an email list. Can you type in the number one if you've got a, a substantial um, email list that um, you know you utilize to communicate, or you've got a tribe that um, of of an audience that people actually um, you know uh, consume your content? Can you type in the number one if you've got an email list, and can you type in the number two if you're working to build on one? I just really want to know um, if what I'm about to say is going to be relevant. All right. All right, because the first 10 views are crucial. Those are the ones that actually determine if your video is going to go further than or not. And your video YouTube, according to studies, I think it was the Moz um, company or it was the Moz um, uh, people there. It, it, it says that your video's lifespan, all right, your video lifespan is 7.5 hours all right okay so there's a lot of people that haven't got a um an email list all right okay so basically your email list is 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 what you actually own online all the subscribers all the fans all the followers you might be having um on facebook or on other platforms they literally don't mean anything because you are using borrowed ground and borrowed time so you want to make sure you've got a list that actually is responsive that has you know given you permission to communicate with them that's how you increase your views that's how you actually increase your your own income because according to statistics they say every email address that you have on a list constitutes a dollar that you could be making within your business.
All right. So the bigger the list, the bigger the money that you you can have. All right. So back to that part. That's not what I'm talking about. We're now uploading our video. I'm hoping everybody else is in tune with what we're saying. Um, we're now uploading our video and optimizing it as we put it on YouTube. All right. If you're following, just give us a thumbs up or some love. And um, if you're enjoying this, you know, just um, let me know in the comments below. But if it is a question, please hold on to it. I will be opening up for, um, you know, Q&A right at the end of this video. Thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate the love. All right. Now, now that you've found your video keywords, you've created, um, you know, a compelling at least five minute length of a video. It's got great information it's got great content in it it's now time to upload that video um you know on on, on youtube and your your you gotta do this with seo in mind all right first of all the video file name itself should contain your 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 targeted keyword all right that a file name that you put on your hard drive when you're saving that video it should already have the title of the video that you're going to put up all right you shouldn't have to change the title of the video once you're already uploading it on youtube you know why google indexes the first you know uh, file name that has been put up there that for copyright issues now you can take advantage of Google actually understanding what you're putting up there by already renaming the file name as you upload it. All right. So don't overuse it again because it will be, you know, it will be shut down upon as keyword stuffing. So remember your YouTube video should be how to rank YouTube videos dot MP4 and then save it onto your hard drive and then upload it while it has already been changed the file name did people understand what i just said if you understood that please um you know type in the number one and then i can move um second all right so once you're uploading it and you um so melissa says not an option when you record on your phone and upload straight to youtube from your phone um yes unfortunately that's not an option um but if you really, really want to go further with your YouTube, I would advise that maybe send that video to your computer so you can change that file name. All right. So at the end of the day, once you've got the video title going, thank you so much, Kylie. Thank you so much, uh, Bernie, right there. Make sure that the keyword is at the beginning of the title. All right. So if your your video is about how to wear, um, you know, a, a, a ballroom dress or whatever your topic is, make sure that keyword is right at the beginning of the title so that it's indexed by Google and by YouTube. All right. So if possible, you want to start your video title off with your target keyword. For example, if you're talking about weight loss or if you're um, talking about healthcare or whatever it is, make sure you write weight loss tips or five ways to drop five extra i mean d drop extra pounds should be then an explanation of what the video is about all right so once you've done that there's a description that goes right at the bottom a lot of people when they upload their video on youtube they forget that description part you need at least two sentences from that description that are a snippet all right because when your video is now being shown on the youtube search engine or on google those two sentences are also to your advantage that you can utilize to convince the user that your video is relevant to what they're searching all right so you don't want to just toss in any few words in in the description box make sure they're actually describing what the video is about and don't make this huge mistake of just dumping keywords in there, hoping that it will be um, ranked. All right. So remember, Google can't watch or listen for video content, but they are aware of what the information is in there. And then they can send that to relevant people that are searching for the right kind of content or the right kind of audience for you. All right. So at the end of the day, you really want to make sure that part is clean and is free of gunk or keyword dumping, all right? Now, Melissa says, how about using brackets, weight loss, um, five words uh, to use, to lose um, five kgs? Okay, 
So the things about brackets or any other funny symbols, Melissa, because have you ever seen in coding, brackets are a signification of this is the end of this particular chunk of code. What if Google's, um, you know, uh, spiders read that as that's all you wanted to read? All right. So you really want to read it in as much as you're writing to a four year old. If you put in brackets that those can have other meaning to what, you know, uh, search engines can read because then they read that as a piece of code. All right. So you don't want to make it difficult for, first of all, your audience to understand what it is that you've put on there because you don't know as well what screen your audience is looking from. Just in case all those brackets may look like a symbol that cannot be interpreted by your audience uh, screen. And then you lose out on people trying to, uh, you know, because their attention span is not that big. So you lose out on people trying to find out what that bracket actually means. So just make it as clean as possible. All right. And make sure you just include maybe just the keyword in your first tag, which is related to what the topic is that you're talking about that you want to be ranked for. Now, if you understood any of that part, can you please just type in the number one? <laughs> and also, if you're actually enjoying this video, let me know by typing the number three. Let's make it a bit different right now, because there's no point in me spraying and praying, um, you know, to an empty theater. Uh, Kate Payne says attention span two seconds. I don't know. I, I mean, it keeps changing, but you know, people don't really care what you've got to say unless you are actually helping them. So you want to help them by actually helping them. You know, people would move and go on and search for other, um, you know, search for other videos. So you want to really make sure that you, you're making it as simple um, for them as possible. First of all, just being uh, giving you um, um, a, a recap, the total watch time of your video matters. All right. How long are you retaining that audience on YouTube? Thank you so much, everybody else is typing in the number three. All right. You want to keep people watching that video for as long as part of as possible. You want to keep people on the YouTube platform for as long as possible. So your total watch time actually does matter. And remember, every 10 seconds is buying you yet another 10 seconds into the video. So make it compelling, make it engaging, and Google will actually look at that favorably and rank your video. All right. So at the end of the day, they, there's, there is quite a lot for you to actually, um, you know, take on, but you really got to make sure you are retaining people with that content because quality trumps quantity. And even though they're both important, it's really, really, really important that the quality of that video, the sound in and of itself, the lighting is not, you know, are, are not factors that are letting people swipe right with your video. All right. So if you really want to get loads of video um, videos or really a lot of content, also utilize other social media to reach out. Okay. Link your video in either um, your email signature um, and bid your videos in blog posts or share your videos to um, social media. All right. So when you put that video, um, when you put that video in your email signature, people that email you uh, will generally get to know, like, and trust you immediately. Now, Kate says is a logo intro losing their attention. Right. You see, the thing is with the logo, if it's giving information, that also helps. Does the logo explain what it is that you do for them? Does it help them understand your business better or does it help them understand why they're watching that video? Because just simply putting a logo for branding purposes, it's a okay, but is it going to help somebody want to keep watching that video or is it just for your own ego? So you want to make sure that if the logo is there, you want to make sure that it's actually helping the customer creating that user experience that we talked about there, Kate. All right. So you want to make sure that is on there. All right. So one other thing that you really um, can use, this is bonus. I'm about to wind down. Sorry. I know this video has been a little bit long, but there's so much 
more than you can just get in one piece of content that I'm just putting out there, all right? So you wanna check out what your competition is also doing and what their tactics are. Because if you notice the same channel um, that keeps showing up in the YouTube uh, search again and again when you're searching for keywords, you're probably wondering, how can I get a piece of that action? So there's a really sneaky way that you can do for you to get listed depending on who your biggest competition is um, that has a high ranking video. Just use their channel name and the tags of one of your videos. Don't overdo it, but for, you know, if, you, if, your, if your audience also looks at maybe Sally's um, videos, just type in review of Sally's content as part of your tags. You know, because you're allowed, I think, about 20 or so tags that you can utilize. So you want to use that space at least for one tag to put in your competition. And Google will read that as a keyword. So when their videos are ranked, at least yours is there somewhere. All right. So it, it is a under the, the cuff type of tactic. But at the end of the day, you really want to make sure that your user retention is out, is off the chain. People actually are enjoying watching your video. You don't have fluctuating, um, you know, users. Keep the audience engaged. Make sure you are understanding what it is that they're looking for and you're providing that content for them. All right. So at the end of the day, this is how a video can go viral. All right. You can use a process called steps. S-T-E-P-P-S. Now, let me just look at what Melissa says. Can you explain in detail uh, what you put in? Is it a link to their channel in the tags? Not a link to their channel. So, Melissa, let's say you are my competition or I'm your competition. I can say, um, I can put in the tags, Melissa Groom. All right? As in reviews for Melissa Groom or anything that mentions your name. It's not like they're going to come looking for that or they're going to dob you out for using their name. But when Google now reads that as a title tag, it will also put you in the same ranking as if that video is coming from Melissa Groom. But use that sparingly, all right? Because once people go and find that video is, mis, um, is, is, is deceiving for them, then obviously they're going to put a thumbs down. And the more thumbs down you have, it actually lessens the quality of your video. So if you are confident that the, uh, the information that you're putting um, in that video is genuine, is, is useful, and is helpful, yes, by all means, use other ranking videos, um, you know, uh, titles or keywords, so that you too can actually get the benefit of the, 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 the juice that they're producing and the viewership that they're producing, all right? But use that sparingly. It's the type of stuff that they say, do not try this at home. When you get confidence, that's one of the things that you can actually utilize, all right? So like I was saying, when you really want something to go viral, I'm going to give you another five-step process and then we're done. <laughs> all right, so if you want the five-step process, just type in number five and then I will go through it. And then I'll also be just checking to see what else is relevant to this particular audience to make sure that this video is going to be the ultimate, you, um, the ultimate, um, you know, um, the ultimate blueprint that you need to refer to every single time that you want to rank your videos on YouTube. So if you want the, uh, the last five steps that you really need to make your videos go viral or to make sure that people actually understand what you're talking about, please type in the number five. All right. So this is actually from, um, um, you know, massive, uh, um, what do you call it? ways that we utilize and really, really, really get people to understand what we're actually doing. All right. So first of all, you need to capture your audience. All right. You need to find the right kind of people with the right kind of pain, with the right kind of payoff and your product should marry what your brand actually represents. Now your content should engage, should educate, should be inspirational, providing value, and it should be positioning you as the go-to person. Remember what I mentioned at the first, at the start there, that, you know, you, you, you give people a preview, 
You give them proof that you're the authority within that space to speak about what it is that you're speaking. And then you hook them back again with a preview. And then pretty much make sure that your video is converting. You're solving people's problems and you're literally not really selling them. You're, it's just really online marketing and it's got a few calls to action. Those will help you with the retention. And then pretty much after that, you are actually proving your own authority. You're branding yourself in the process. You are creating relationships with the people because these are the people that are going to be paying you money, all right, for you to leave the lifestyle that you want. And you are actually building loyalty within those people. All right. And then they will be able to be your own ambassadors and then they can share that information. All right. And then at the end of the day, you're building a community with every piece of content that you're putting out there. Now, the last bit that you're actually going to do is you got to make sure that video makes whoever has watched it to feel good. If you cannot make somebody feel good, they have no need to share that video or continuously watch that video. So you got to have a few triggers within that video that actually reminds them of what they already know and gives them practical tips that they can utilize immediately. If you cannot do that, then obviously nobody would watch your video. There wouldn't be any um, retention that YouTube wants. Your keywords would have been wasted because nobody really watches the video all, all the way to the end. All right. And you want to make sure that video is definitely defining where at what position your customer is. Are they just getting to know you? Are they just getting to discover your brand or have they a bit of awareness of where you are and they're ready to convert? All right. So whatever message you're putting out there, make sure the market actually knows likes and trust you and you have to build that trust you build that into being consistent you cannot be a one-click wonder if you really want to be successful either online or on youtube because you're there to make a difference you're there to pass on your message so you have to make sure that the people that are going to be utilizing your content your platform or your services or your knowledge are not going to be left hanging in the air because people are tired of one click wonders. So you want to make sure that your subscribers know that they can count on you. They know that you deliver quality content and then Google eventually would reward you. The system will eventually reward you for putting out really good content out there. Now I can't thank you enough for, you know, being present on this show today. If you got a value on a scale of one to 10, can you please type in the number that you think this video should be awarded? All right. On a scale of one to 10, how much value did you get in this video today? I can't thank you enough. Melissa as well, the visibility mentor for availing me this opportunity to be of service, all right? Because we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And my belief is that every online business should be profitable and we all should enjoy working uh, in our business. And if there's ways that we can all help each other to actually reach our audiences so that we too can pass on our message, deliver that uh, message so that people, um, you know, can um, you know, what, what do you call it? Be, do, and have a happier existence. Then that means all those people will continuously want more from us and we are there to provide. Now, thank you everybody else that's um, typing in the number 10 there. It really humbles me and it really validates the fact that, um, you know, this, this, this wasn't a waste of people's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, let's open up questions. Right. Who's got the first question and... Um, how can we, we probably just going to entertain five or uh, so questions. So be quick to put them through and then the rest, you can always type them in and uh, I will sit around and um, make sure that they are all answered. And, um, you know, because, you know, you might not have the speed to type those questions as you go. But remember, retention, make sure you have people hanging on to every word that you're saying. All right. Make sure you are letting people understand why they should get that information from you. 
to make sure that there is quality enough for people to want to subscribe to your channel so that they keep coming back for more. And let me tell you something, it does take time. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Overnight success. I don't think anyone in this group is, um, you know, um, off that uh, assumption. So it takes time. And the more you, you keep plugging in, the more it works better. Now, what do you think about distribution platforms to get more views? All right. Great stuff. Oh, Bernie says you mentioned steps. Okay. Sorry, I will. <laughs> I got sidetracked. I got sidetracked. Right now, what do you think about distribution platforms to get more views? All right now, Melissa, what do you want to do? There's a tool. Um, there's a tool called Recur Post that you can utilize. So you can you can embed that video into a blog and you can share it on to your um, you know your social media and you know pixel that blog so that you can actually. Uh, target that audience that has already seen your content, all right? So Recur Post is www.recurpost.com.au. I mean, .com, sorry, not, not AU. There's also Bafa, and then there's also those social media, um, what do you call them? Those social media aggregators. Most of them work. Hootsuite is one of them that you can utilize. You can also use those, but there's one thing, there's a power play between YouTube and Facebook. If you post a link from YouTube, direct the thumbnail is usually very very small all right so you can use a, a, um, a, a tool um, I think I wrote it down here it's called YouTube um, YouTube to Facebook yb2fb.com so it makes big um, you know it makes your your thumbnail a little bit bigger there all right so that should work and um, me, Bernie says you mentioned steps. Oh, okay. So steps is basically does your video have social currency? Does it have triggers around so that people can be reminded of something within the in environment? What emotion is contained in that video? All right. And um, does it have public appeal? Does it have anything that people can utilize in public there and there? Or can they actually action it as soon as they finish watching that video? Has it got practical value that they can actually use or oh, go from that video and say, wow, I learned something new. And are they stories? Because we as humans, we are designed not to grasp facts, but stories. All right. So the more, the bigger the story, then the bigger the retention, the bigger the, 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 the entertainment that's in that video. And then it continues to spread like a ripple. Um, you know, it gets like that a ripple effect. I hope I answered you there well, uh, Bernie. Now, Sandra says, I know we're talking YouTube, but why would Facebook tell me that one of my comments on your live was spam? Why? I know we're talking YouTube, but why would Facebook tell me that one of my comments on your live feed was spam? I want to know. Maybe it's your, maybe it's your settings or I, I wouldn't know why, why that is possible. I'm so sorry about that. And, um... Melissa says, what about Tube Mogul? Um, I've never heard of Tube Mogul, but I know of a tool uh, called Tube Buddy. All right. So that one can also help you with keyword selection. That one can also help you spy on your competition so that you can use their title tags in your video. So it's called www.tubebuddy.com. All right. Um, I've never heard of Tube Mogul. I'll probably look it up and thanks for that. Um, and Bernie says, yes, you did. And thank you. All right. So I think I'm going to have to bounce. Um, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, Melissa, the visibility mentor. And if anyone really wants to um, find out what it is that we do, I'm always available on Facebook live at 2 p.m. AEST every single day without fail. Every single day without fail, except, oh no, sorry, yeah, so, <laughs> except for Saturday and Sunday. So at 2 p.m. AST, if you really want to know how you can, um, you know, package, brand, and market your services, 
I am available. You can always tap into my live sessions. They're always like drinking from a fire hose like this, but we're talking about different stories and they're really, really informative, all right? Because I understand that and, and I really, really believe that everybody that has an online business, it should be profitable and you should actually enjoy working in it. So if I know something and you know something, let's all collaborate because we're all here to leave, we're here to learn and here to contribute. And we can never... Because we all learn from other people's mistakes and we can't commit all the other mistakes. So if I've gone through something that can help you, I'm more than happy to impart that knowledge to you. Now, I don't see any other questions, so maybe it's time for me to vamos. But at the end of the day, I really, really thank you for your attention. I really, really thank you, um, Melissa, for allowing me this opportunity. If anyone has any questions, type them in. Um, in the bottom there, and uh, if I can be of any help, please do not hesitate to explore that option. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your evening, and if you're watching this video in post-production, please type in the number two so that we actually know that um, you, know, you, you watched this up until the end. In the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you.